Good morning, y'all. This is the third day of fall, and I'm a little late. <laughs> well, I don't really think I'm late. I think I'm right on time. Um, this is only the second day that our temps have dropped out of the 90s and 100s, and I didn't want to get ahead of myself as far as planting radish seed, um, or planting my fall crops, I should say, and what I have here is some radish. Uh, I'm also going to be planting two types of lettuces, a uh, butter crunch and a salad bowl lettuce. Uh, I'll be planting a spinach and of course this radish. And I'm gonna be planting all of this in raised beds. And we collected our seed off of the radish from spring. And this was a giant ruby radish. And so what I'm doing now is I'm just gonna go through and pull the seed from the protective pods that they're in and they're good and dehydrated they've they've had plenty of time to shrink up dry out this is what you're left with whenever you have a seed from radish what I like to do is just go through and press with my index finger and my thumb and just pop that pod open and inside, you'll have these little gems. And I'm only going to collect enough for one raised bed, which will probably, there's only, seems to be probably about um, three to six seeds in each one of these. So I'm actually probably going to do more than what I expected. Uh, to break open and that's fine we have them now the raised bed i'm going to put these in are going to be on the north side of the house i'm just discarding the pods in the lids of this container it's saving me some time from having to go through later and pull the pods out and sometimes to get that pod to pop open you just need to take off the um both ends and just give it a, a light squeeze and pull it apart. There's one little seed lodged in there. I'll just use the stem to pop it out. Now on your radish seed, it is like your broccoli as far as you have two cells that run parallel to each other and there are seeds on both sides. It has a little divider in there that separates and I try not to get too rough with them for the simple fact that uh, I don't want a mess to clean up out of the seed bowl itself, but sometimes they can be a little difficult. Now in spring we had quite a few go to seed, so we were able to, all this seed was collected from one, one raised bed. And of course one plant can produce just uh, bukus, so many, uh, and thank goodness for that because it takes so many to get a proper yield. Now we did plant them a little thick last year, or not last year, in the spring, and um, you know, like I said, we we make sure we plant enough so that uh, pests or something like that can get the, gets a hold of them, that it doesn't affect the overall crop or yield. But this definitely was a good a good provider. That's why we saved the seeds off of them um, or chose to. And you know, I like saving my seed because I determine how much I plant based uh, on what I want instead of uh, a package, you know, having to buy 
three packages uh, to do an eight foot bed or um, you know with this seed I can potentially plant a hundred foot row of radish especially if I space them correctly. Now we're having cooler temps this week so everything should germinate just fine. Uh, yesterday afternoon I got 18 cells of broccoli. That should be plenty to give us about uh, two gallons to freeze for winter, which sounds like a lot, but we really, we eat broccoli. Um, we can eat it. We put it in almost everything. Uh, frozen, fresh. What I really like about broccoli is you really can't muck it up with sugar. <laughs> I'm sure there will be someone that comes up with a recipe that have a sweet broccoli, but uh, well, we're getting there. I can see that. That's probably about half of what I want to collect here. So I'm saving these little pods. Um, if I forget or if I don't see a seed, in there, uh, it's no problem. I'm going to go and give these to our, our hens and uh, let them scratch over them and pick at them. They, uh, they like to do that. They, they like to be thought of. I have seen a couple of different methods of collecting uh, seeds that grow in pods like this. Uh, one of them is put them all in a pillowcase or a towel and beat it. Beat that towel, beat that pillowcase, you know, uh, on a rock. Through that, the pod releases uh, the seed and you just gotta go through and clean up. I don't really like doing that for the fact that um, I enjoy taking my time and breaking each one. If the seed is black or moldy, that's a good time to spot it. You know which pod it came out of. You don't have to save the pod. You can immediately discard it. And it's just taking that time. You know, you're you're going to have to go through and clean out all of the pods and the stems and all the broken pieces. Um, anyways, so it's not saying one way is faster than the other. I guess it's just a, uh, a preference, a preference of timing, what you have time to do. Now, I will admit, this is our first time that we are going through and making a fall winter bed. So I'm, I'm very excited to see how it turns out. And, you know, a lot of people there have uh, put their beds to rest in their gardens. And, uh, and we are in certain areas, especially for our summer crops. But our raised beds, uh, we add the nutrients to them, and it's easier to add the nutrients to them. So because of that, we can grow more, uh, have more growing space. I should say, not really grow more, but we are expected to have uh, thunderstorms this evening. So that's another reason of wanting to get these in. Woodpecker, red-headed woodpecker. They are out in full effect this morning. But radish seed is really easy to save. Nothing special you have to do really with it, uh, except be patient. Uh, it has to dry on the plant. And after it's done drying, uh, you know, the pods will turn this, this color, uh, which is a, a white to light tan. And, you know, you'll, you'll be able to tell. You don't really want to pick them when they're green. Um, it's just underdeveloped seed. No matter how plump they are, no matter how, you know, it, you want to wait until they, they finish drying. And I know a lot of times that can be difficult because you're ready to clear that bed. You're ready to 
get something else planted or or move on and you know but if you want to collect that seed then you have to let them dry and that goes the same for broccoli spinach uh, you know and sometimes uh, those beds can become eyesores or those areas of where they're at but they are still providing nutrients to the soil too as well they uh you know they're breaking down um, and decaying uh, that process is adding your nutrients nitrogen things that that soil needs to be productive for the next crop one thing that i like about growing all of this in raised beds too is we control the the rotation um, i remember what i had planted where and I can move in accordance of what needs to be rotated. You don't really have to do much for your radish bed. They do like water, um, but uh, you know, just uh, as long as it's not too rocky, um, things that would hinder that root from forming. So you want a good loose soil for it to go into. That's another reason why I like to grow in raised beds because I know it's not uh, rocky or cloddy, anything like that. I'm able to work it really good before, before planting. But whenever that pot is dry, you can just pull it directly from the plant gently. And you know, you can put it in a Ziploc bag, you can, um, put it in a glass jar, uh, you can process it then uh, and pull the seeds out and, um, you know, store the seeds in some way without the pods if you have the time to do that. Uh, we didn't really have the time to do that. Uh, when these were seeding, we were milking. Uh, we were milking five goats. So that was taking up quite a bit of the morning to do and when you're raising them dairy goats they come first those udders are important you can't let them go so but our time slows down a bit in the fall so these these chores these tasks whatever you want to call them are a little a little better to do during these times so we like to consume all parts of the radish. We like eating the leaves. We like the the root. Um, radish leaves are actually quite delicious, uh, especially when they're young. That is kind of why I am collecting so much seed here to plant. Half of the bed will be for the tops, um, and then half of the bed will be for the root itself. Now I've never eaten mature leaves they always seem to be a little too tough but i'm sure they can be if they're sauteed or they can't be any harder than a uh, kale and uh you know, if you've had kale fresh kale before you know it can be a bit fibrous now we normally do grow kale not for our consumption we grow it for the goats uh, that is a spring item that we grow uh we grow it uh, for the nursing goats, uh, for the goats that are pregnant and nursing. We just feel it's uh, extremely healthy for them. They need every single bit of nutrients that they can get. So, you know, a lot of our vegetables we do grow for the, the goats. Man, we have trees breaking around here. There's another tree breaking in the back. One broke last night when we were sitting on the front porch. A limb broke out of it. Now it could be just black ants. because we There's a lot of oaks out here. Makes me grateful that we didn't build up under them anything. We were talking about that with putting in our peacock house and an aviary pen for them and where exactly we're going to do it. With those trees falling like that, the limbs... You know, there's no sign of death on them. It, uh, that's what I just figure. Maybe the ants are getting up in there. But they've really started since this rain yesterday. 
we've been so dry and it rained for almost two days uh, in a row all day both days and everything's good and wet now I wouldn't really say saturated um, it, it mainly just drizzled but we were able to collect quite a bit to fill our cistern back up our rainwater catchment system and the birds at the barn have and the goats have plenty of water now to last them another hmm I'd say about another month we got low though we ran out up there at the barn and we had to uh haul water up from the pond well let me quit telling stories we <laughs> we pumped water off the pond uh, into a container and then from that container we we don't have a hosing to run far enough from the pond up to the goat pen so but we can put a halfway point in and from that halfway we we run a hose into a bucket and or a a barrel and then we pull off that barrel and take it on up to the goats they were really drinking going through the water we had put a mineral block out for them and uh to make sure they don't get copper deficient you know what they do believe this is going to complete the radish seed that we need all right <clears throat> i'm not gonna worry about these these little ones here and I do believe that's given us everything that we need right here. That'll be plenty to get started with. Like I said, we're doing a, uh, a six foot by two foot bed. We're going to go through and plant them thick on one half because I, I, I need the tops to form. And then on the other half, we'll, we'll thin them as they start coming up. Yeah. All right. So next, let's see. Um, I have to uh, add some soil to these raised beds, and uh, I gotta head out and get that that soil. But uh, I pulled our sweet potatoes. Uh, we didn't get as many as I thought. Um, I think there was a couple of reasons why, and they were right up under the pine trees, and the pine could have changed the acidity in the soil. But we did get a couple of good sized ones here. Uh, so these need to be cured uh, before the sweet starts setting in on them. Uh, I went ahead and pulled them all. Uh, these small ones here, uh, there's a couple of options that I can use for these. I can save these and let them dehydrate and use these as my seeds for next year. Or uh, I will chop them up. I'll boil them and chop them up and use them in a homemade dog food. Our, our dogs love sweet potatoes, and uh, thank goodness, because um, it helps uh, save some money by making our own dog food. Now, it's not many that's in here that are that small, but every little bit helps. Uh, we will probably actually just save those four seed to get us started for next year. Um, so, but I was expecting about 10 to 20 pounds off of them, and that didn't happen. I think we might have got maybe six to seven pounds here, maybe five to six pounds, actually, uh, not to exaggerate. Now, from this point, if you just wanted to go ahead and stick these in a little glass jar, that would be fine. They're completely dry. There's no moisture in them, so you don't have to worry about mold and rot setting in on them. And uh, if you are worried about it, you can just take a little piece of uh, paper towel and stick them in the bottom of the jar, put these on top, and then put another piece of paper towel on top of that. And uh, that will help pull that moisture out of them if, there are, if they are still moist. Uh, but they shouldn't be if you've waited and let them dry on the plant. I'm going to go and grab the wheelbarrow, run over and grab some topsoil from around the hay feeders because it is a really rich uh, soil uh, with the goats doing their part. And, uh, and I'll blend that all in to the raised beds and these will be ready to cast or so. And um, they should start germinating in uh, three to five days. All right, so we are on the north side of the house and these are the raised beds that we're going to be working out of one today. has strawberries in it so we're not messing with that i'm just going to go through and weed them uh lift the lid and 
pull out everything that needs to be pulled out. Uh, I'm going to stir this grass in to it. Uh, I'm going to add an activated charcoal to the beds and more soil that's going to come around from around the hay feeder over here. I'm just gonna scratch back the, the hay that's there and get what I need. This bed here is the most neglected out of them. Uh, we had mint in here, but it has not come back at all. We had a lemon mint and a spearmint. Um, and so, that's gonna take two hands. And, uh, and then go ahead and fill the bed back up to the rim. All of them need some dirt. We got probably about 12 wheelbarrows of dirt that need to come in. Uh, two per each and four on this one here. I better quit jabbering and get to it. radish step over here and this bed is the leaf lettuce uh, salad bowl or I'm not sure what it's called doing good so far so good so far really good 